Today we're going to talk about viruses. So viruses are non-living particles that, are, that have a nucleic acid in the middle wrapped, around, wrapped inside a protein coat called a capsid. The nucleic acid could be either DNA or RNA depending on the virus. Some viruses also have an external envelope uh, in addition to the capsid. Here we see lots of different shapes of, of uh, viruses. They come in different shapes and sizes and kinds of structure. This type is called a bacteriophage uh, and it's one that infects bacteria. It kind of looks like a lunar module. It kind of looks like it has legs that walk but the, the leg pieces there are just for attachment to the surface of the bacteria and they don't actually let it walk, walk and move around. Here's a generalized influenza virus showing that it's got the nucleic acid inside, a pro inside of the capsid and then it's got an envelope around it and the ones that have envelopes oftentimes are the ones that are uh, cause diseases that are hard to, that are easy to catch because the envelope is often made of uh, cell membrane components of the host cell so it's easily recognized by the cell as being part of itself. Uh, viruses are acellular, that means they don't, they're not made of cells. They are parasites of cells. They can invade and reproduce in cells. They are not classified into domain or kingdom. They're not really considered living things, uh, although some scientists have def different definitions of life, but by the definition of living things that we have, they don't fit. They are passive. Okay, They're much smaller than cells. They are at the mercy of the environment, and they're controlled by their genetic material. They don't really do anything. They don't have any metabolism. They can't move around on their own. They just travel in fluids or in the air or so forth, um, and they can't really do anything for themselves until they take over a cell. Viruses were discovered in 1933 by a man named Wendell Stanley. One of the first ones discovered was the tobacco mosaic virus. That's what this looks like here. It looks like a long rod-shaped thing, and actually that's a spiral um, capsid structure around the nucleic acid core. This causes a disease of tobacco plants called uh, tobacco mosaic, and it, it basically makes these little dead areas in the, set, in the leaves and makes them unusable for the product. Um, so how do you classify viruses? First of all, we classify by genome, whether they're an RNA or DNA virus. The RNA viruses are called retroviruses because retro means not old, but it means backwards. And so what happens is that the, D the RNA is actually backwards transcribed into DNA uh, inside the, the host cell. They are also classified by what the virus might infect. And, and another way they're classified is by shape. You have spherical ones. You have polyhedral ones that are made of a you know, regular polyhedral shape like, a, like an icosahedron here. Uh, you have helical ones that have a nucleic acid uh, helix there that have capsid proteins attached. Kind of looks like petals on a flower. And then you have the vinyl or the uh, complex com combination like the, like the um, bacteriophage here that has a polyhedral capsid, a helical uh, neck region, and then it has these tail pieces. Um, bacteriophages affect bacteria only. Okay, but we've learned a lot about how bacteria act by seeing what they do in, in viruses. And so they have, basically there are two cycles that can be present. There's a lytic cycle and a lys lysogenic cycle. When you have an active bacterial inf uh, a viral infection, that's in the lytic cycle. And so what happens in there is that the, the um, bacterial chromosome uh, causes, takes over the cell and causes the cell to start producing viral particles that are then put together and assembled. And basically you end up with the lysis or the rupture of the cell releasing the new virus particles. Some viruses are also able to go into a lysogenic phase where the viral DNA actually hides inside the bacterial chromosome here. You see the blue part is inside the purple and it's called a prophage at that part. At that point, every time the bacterial cell is reproduced, it reproduces the virus. Uh, DNA as well, and at some point, some stressor causes it to come out of the of the um, bacterial genome and become active. So the lysogenic is kind of a hiding phase, and the lytic phase is a more active cycle. Um, this just shows you a little more detail about the lytic cycle. Okay, so you have the phage that uh, attaches to the DNA, to the bacterium, injects its DNA. The DNA starts. Um, replicating itself and taking over the bacterial machinery to make the viral particles which are then assembled and once you have thousands and thousands of them in there it's going to break the uh, bacterium open and start another cycle. It's going to cause rupture of the cell which will cause cell death. Uh, so here's, here's the, the nitty-gritty to write down. The lytic cycle uh, results in the release of new phages and there's the steps. The parent virus injects its DNA 
the new phage DNA and proteins are synthesized, the new phages are assembled, and then the cells lyse and release the phages to go on and infect other cells. The lysogenic cycle is a little bit more complicated. But, uh, viruses that go into a lysogenic cycle may stay in that lysogenic part of the cycle for weeks, months, even many years before they become active again. And there's some kind of factor that causes it to become active and enter the lytic cycle at that point. So the, so the prophage um, enters, integrates into the bacterial chromosome here. And then, again, every time the bacterium repl replicates, it replicates that DNA as well. And then, then at some point, the prophage is going to exit that bacterial chromosome, become active, and make the, vi make the uh, cell start producing more viruses. Okay, so here we have the steps. Prophage inserts into the host chromosome. The host chromosome replicates normally, copying the prophage every time. Some environmental stress activates the viral DNA and begins the lytic cycle. So how do you get new viruses in, in a population? Well, these are called emerging viruses, and they can be caused by a lot of things. Uh, contact between species sometimes results in the transfer of viruses from one species to another. Um, the viruses usually change a little bit as that happens. Uh, viruses can be spread between isolated populations, and then also mutation can definitely have an effect on viruses. The, the DNA can change, and that changes the effectiveness of the virus. This is what happens with cold viruses, why you have different kinds. You can catch a cold every year, and there's no real vaccine against a cold because the cold virus mutates very common, very easily, and there are hundreds or thousands of them around, so you can get a cold every year and not get the same exact virus. Um, RNA viruses mutate pretty often because there are a lot more errors um, to be made in replicating the RNA and they're not proofread and corrected like the DNA is. Um, and then existing viruses can give off into new strains uh, like the flu shot in the cold, I mean, like the flu in the cold and, and things like that. HIV is the, uh, the uh, human immunodeficiency virus that causes the acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Um, you can't, the HIV is a retrovirus. Uh, it carries two copies of the RNA instead of one copy. It also in, uh, carries an enzyme called reverse transcriptase. And that's the enzyme that is necessary to read that RNA and translate or transcribe it back into DNA to take over the cell's machinery. It's especially harmful because it affects cells of the immune system. And it usually has a pretty long latent period uh, up to like 10 or 20 years before it becomes active. Um, so here we have the viral DNA with the reverse transcriptase, uh, making a DNA strand, which then becomes double-stranded DNA, inserts itself into the chromosome, okay, and then it's going to produce the viral RNA and proteins to make new cells, and then the capsule around the outside comes from the membrane of the host. Um, the RNA is a template to make the DNA. There's a second complementary strand made as a result, and then it enters the cell's chromosome and transcribes the viral DNA back into RNA, and then new viruses are assembled and sent off to infect more and more cells. Other infective particles that are not cells are viroids and proteins. Viro viroids are circular RNA molecules that infect plants, um, and they cause errors in the regulatory system. And a couple of examples listed here of different kinds of things. And then prions are misfolded proteins, which clump together oftentimes in the brain. And they cause degenerative brain diseases like the ones listed here. Mad cow disease is the one that you're most familiar with. Kreutzfeldt jakob disease is the human equivalent of mad cow disease. And it basically causes um, this. another name for the mad cow disease is bunge bovine spongiform encephalitis, which means that it, encephalitis is talking about the brain, bovine talks about cattle, and the spongiform means it makes the brain kind of spongy because you have areas that degenerate. And we're going to stop there on viruses and we'll continue in the next lesson on uh, bacteria.